A Critical Interpretation of Team Umizumi, Tip Kid Today we have a book named A Critical Interpretation of Team Umizumi, Tip Kid. I think they're so pretty, I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. The Critical Interpretation of the Relationship and Comparison of the Young Adult Mentality and Team Umizumi What does one think of when they hear the name Team Umizumi? Well, more often than not, one would think one of two things. I've never heard of that before, or isn't that a show on Nick Jar? However, now that the facts of what it is have been established, what if I were to introduce the idea that it is something more than what has already been stated? What if I were to try and convince you that this children's show was actually a psychological statement of balance and equality? But perhaps by the time you finished reading, you'll have heard enough to at least consider my theory. Until then, though, you might want to take this idea with a grain of salt. Timu Mizumi is a symbolic representation of a healthy and stable teenage mind. Now, before we go any deeper with that idea, allow me to shed some background on our topic. Timu Mizumi is a children's educational television show that airs on Nick Jar to teach children about basic preschool math. The show involves a team of tiny superheroes that help the kids around Umi City using their mighty math powers. The team consists of three people, Millie, her brother Gio, and their best robot friends Bob. Each character has a special, mostly math-related superpower. Millie can create and project any pattern with her pattern power and can also cause her ponytails to grow and use them to measure with her Millie measure power. Geo can build almost anything with shapes from his shape belt using his super shape power. Now, Bot, he's the reason I said their powers are mostly math related. Bot's powers are more technical than anything. His limbs can extend to great lengths with his arms legs extend. Oh power, he can project images on his belly screen. He can store items in his bot, 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 oh mat, and do other various things as the plot calls for it. Usually, the only math he'll be doing is that of counting, or something else that doesn't fall under the categories of patterns, measuring, or shape. The show also has a few other reoccurring characters, but they aren't particularly important to our thesis, so we'll leave them for now. Speaking of our thesis, let's dive right into the fun stuff. Each of our main characters plays a role in our thesis. Let's start with Millie. Now, in terms of the show, Millie is just a six-year-old superhero with a nice personality. However, for the sake of our thesis, she is now out left brain. This is the moment when you say, wait, what? Well, some of you may be familiar with the idea that the hand you write with shows what side of your brain you use more. Those who are right-handed use their left brain more and, as a result, think from a more logical standpoint. What I'm trying to say by all this is that Millie is a more logical thinker than anything else. In the show, she usually is the one to interact with the audience through the fourth wall, giving off the idea that she is the leader of the team. Leaders typically have to think things through slowly and rationally, lest they lead their followers to failure. Also, Millie's plans are logical at least to the point that they allow us to suspend our disbelief in a show about math superheroes. Millie is the type to take charge of a situation logically, to rationalize and to critically think about a problem before coming to a solution. Well, that's all fine and dandy, you might say. But what about the right brain? Ah, yes, the right brain. Those who have the left hand as their dominant are said to think in a more free-flowing way, rather than by the book-like right-hander. 
So if Millie's our left brain, logical and analyzing, who better to have as our right brain than her brother, Geo? Now, if you'll recall, I said that Geo's powers are all about building stuff with his shapes. So as such, it would be a fact to say that he is a builder and one who creates. Would it be so far off, then, to say that he is an artist? After all, one cannot simply throw some materials together and claim to have built something without any creative thought whatsoever. To build and create takes a mind that is free, imaginative, and out of the box. As previously stated, Geo is very much a builder and, as such, a creative mind. Also, I feel it necessary to mention Geo's unique ideas. Normally, Millie or Bot are the ones coming up with the plans, but every once in a while Geo will pop in with his two cents. And in those moments we get such gems as catching someone about to fall from a roof with a giant bowl of spaghetti and meatballs. Yes, that actually happened in the show. So while Millie is rational, logical, and a critical thinker, Geo is creative, imaginative, and artistic. The left brain and the right brain. Now, what about Boat? Well, here's where things get a bit tricky. Unfortunately, there's no middle brain for Bot to represent, so we'll have to mix things up a bit. Although I just separated Millie and Geo as two different psychological entities, let us now group them together as one. The child, a symbol of innocence and a simpler time. To complement that, Ba is now the adult. The child and adult are more separate mentalities, rather than dominant parts of the brain, but I did say that we would be mixing things up a bit. Now, the child and adult mentalities are fairly self-explanatory. The child is the mentality of, well, a child, and the adult is that of an adult. Easy, right? Millie and Geo are our child because no matter how mature and capable of handling themselves they may seem at times, they are still children requiring guidance and care. Bot is our adult because he fills the role of caretaker for them. He is shown throughout the series to genuinely care for their well-being and comes off almost like a father, babysitter, a really cool older brother. He has been shown multiple times to be supportive and loving of Millie and Geo by doing things like reading them storybooks or playing with toys with them. Not only that, but Boat also has a fair bit of knowledge under his belt, which is reasonable, considering he does have a built-in supercomputer. Whenever Millie and Geo have a question about how something works, like how to find a book in a library or how water gets to the city, Bot has an answer and easy-to-understand explanation. Despite his funny nature and occasional childlike moment, Bot has the maturity and knowledge that Millie and Geo lack. Well, now we have all the pieces. Millie, the left brain, Geo, the right brain, and Bot, the adult. Time to put this puzzle together. Like I said, this show represents balance and equality. You've probably seen that already. Millie and Geo balance each other and Bot balances the two of them. But you might also remember I said something about the representation of a healthy and stable teenage mind. Well, yeah. Millie shows us that you need to have a bit of critical thinking, and Geo tells you that you need to balance that with creativity. The two of them together say there's no major rush to grow up all at once, but Bot reminds us that we do need to be ready for the future. All together, they are Team Omizumi, balanced, equal, and a symbolic representation of a healthy mentality. And yes, Feel free to write me off as insane now. I'll be honest. I only wrote this out of boredom and because all my applet summer work put my brain in college professor mode. Other than that, it should be all explained in the essay. The End Good job, friends. 
Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.